Hello, Taurus. Let's have a look at you. Okay, so Tori and, and the relationship and love and partnerships and all that crap <laughs> needs to be with uh, somebody or nobody, but some person who really gets them, who really freaking does, even to the point where they know what they're going to say, they know what they're going to tell, they know how they smell, they know how they say these things, they know the little inwards, you know, the little jokes that, you know, you laugh at all the time. There needs to be a very strong consideration of partner for that reason, because not everybody got the time for that, Taurus. Not everyone got the time to really spoon feed you and understand exactly your mind and inclinations and how you like to sleep at night and what side of the bed you prefer and what kind of pajamas you prefer. And if it's your birthday, what color, you know, um, anything you'd prefer and, you know, what size are your shoes. If somebody like gives you slippers for, you know, your birthday, like people don't freaking have the time and Taurus forgets it. Taurus like, oh, but, but you know, I do this for you every day, so I need that back. And there's something for Taurus that needs to be um, very strongly understood uh, for the other person who's living with Taurus, even like as a family or friend or, you know, if you're together, there's a constant, if there's a joining, you guys are together, you live in the same space. Taurus needs to be understood because sometimes they're a little bit neurotic about things that people really don't give a fuck about. For example, like they like a certain cup, you know, they like certain type of milk and certain amount of creamer and their coffee, sugar, you know, whatever they want. And these things can drive people nuts. But if you are with somebody who's really practically minded, such as a Cancer or an Aquarius even to a degree, they will need to be uh, showing off uh, healing. You need to show how you're healing to people, Taurus. Because sometimes you may not actually see it yourself, but you are transcending a lot of yourself through relationships. And there'll need to be like healing shown. For example, hey, remember how I used to drink coffee every day and I used to be really anal about the amount of creamer? Well, this time I don't care. I just want to look into your eyes. I just want to see, like, come on, let's go outside. Let's go somewhere nice. If there's certain types of people that activate that within you, go for it. Even if you don't know who they are. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, it sounds really weird for me to say because I'm really pragmatic with relationships. But say you met somebody and you usually like your spoon on the side and your fork on the side and you eat things a certain way and you go to certain type of scenarios. You meet a girl or a boy. Taurus. And then you just go crazy, like, I don't care, I'll do anything. Well, what do you want to do? Hey, let's run away together. If there is a feeling like that, Taurus, you found it, you found it. You, you, you known it all along, something was gonna happen. Usually, like, when you're, like, looking for something, you're feeling, you, you've known all along something was gonna happen. And then you meet that person online or, like, through a friend, and it's weird, but sometimes you'll just be like, oh my god, that person makes me want to do things I've never done before. Well, it's fine. So basically when it happens, it's karmic and it's really enlightening for you. So let's have a look through the signs. Taurus and Aries, I already discussed it in a previous video. You can have a look at the Aries video uh, if you're interested. Taurus and Aries, uh, stagnancy, um, strong need to abort. Something needs to leave, something needs to shift. For a Taurus, this relationship is very traumatizing at first. So basically when you're with an Aries, they might feel it like a lull. And this video is for anyone with Ascendant, Sun, to a degree Moon, but mostly Venus and Taurus. But also have a look at those aspects in a partner. So for you with an Aries, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be like a Garden of Eden for a while, and then it's gonna be Hell on Earth, and then it's going to be butterflies and rainbows, and then it's gonna be the worst day of your life. There is like, uh, 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 like, uh, like you just don't know what to feel. Like there's a lot of different frequencies. You don't know which one to tune from. They tune to because you basically look at your underside. You're looking at your unconscious because there is the 12th house for you. So you'll be like, oh, uh, uh, frequency changes so much. Oh my God, what am I doing? So basically with this situation, if you don't want to be there most of the time, don't go. If you really, like, have no feeling about what Aries is up to. If you like looking at them going, eh, yeah, yuck. You know, but then sometimes you have really nice sex or you have really nice moment. If you're looking at an Aries Taurus and you're like, oh, yuck. There needs to be a stop. Okay, so be honest with yourself. If you're looking at most of your experiences together and you're like, yuck, but then, like, something's really great. There'll be, like, a jewel. There'll be, like, we've got all this money. Or like, but we've got a kid or something. But if there's mostly yuck for like 20, 30, 40, 50%, then like 20, 30 age group, especially, I don't know why this is coming through. Um, 
especially if you're young and you're not thinking about settling anytime soon, if you are mostly yuck and then a little bit yum about them, there needs to be a stop. So basically, have a look at what you got. Have a look at the scheme. You're a very practical person. Have a look at the scheme. Okay, I get this, 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 this. I can see going there, 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 there. I see the potential here. And I, I don't actually see any potential there. Be like completely brutal to the point like you're looking at stock. Like you're looking at a cow. You're about to buy a cow. That kind of feeling. I know it sounds terrible, but at this point, <laughs> for your frequency, and I'm talking like the next few years, for Taurus, they'll need to be like, okay, I found an Aries, I'm not sure. Okay, let's put it all on paper. Okay, I don't like this, I don't like this, I like this. And then it'll be very clear for you. Uh, anyway, moving on. Taurus and Taurus. Whoa! Taurus loves itself more than anything else. Uh, that means very curious cruelty and strong, deep desire to wound each other. Uh, because sometimes Taurus can see the other person as a flaw more than they can see their own, especially if they're Taurus too. So it's like, hey, you haven't done anything with yourself. You haven't learned a thing. And there might be like a very strong, deep need to be more like a Scorpio and kind of hit them off. Hit them, but because the Scorpio is Scorpio and Taurus is a Taurus, when Taurus is trying to be Scorpionic, it looks weird. So don't hurt each other guys. If you are a Taurus with a Taurus, don't hurt or scorn. Just kind of like go, okay, I am, I am in the heart, in the heart, okay. Sorry, I'm just going to go out and I'm gonna have a cup of tea and I'm gonna have a very nice lie down. I'm just gonna be with me for a while and then you might get together again and form something different but i feel for a taurus taurus relationship who's on top who's on top who's at the bottom there is just like no magic but mostly there's just like feeling of separate uh everything when everything is completely the same to an outsider looking to your relationship they think they got it they got everything together oh, wow that's a perfect relationship but to you it'll be like i can't i can't I can't see myself or like they don't have anything for me and then it'll be like a victim a wounded thing like she's never been there anyway she never really loved me she never cared for me so there needs to be a very strong inner inner choice to be alone maybe to be in bed with them but you go into your own mind like you with them but you sort of like can't be bothered connecting sometimes to the point where you're like numb to each other you can't even feel each other can't even touch what each other is like you sort of numb if that happens that's actually a really nice thing you can be very productive together and you can form like a perfect mirage for other people two tauruses the beautiful home the lovely upholstery the gorgeous children the happy marriage on the outside inside there is something completely different if you're a tourist with a tourist you you meant to be somewhere else in your life in general this is just what's coming for you. sorry guys you missed a boat you miss something uh, but you are still wanting greatness you're still wanting joy and you're still wanting to expand in some way so you expand physically anyway thank you for listening to us Taurus. you can end the video now if it was scary for you so let's have a look at gemini gemini okay so gemini and taurus okay i know somebody both gemini and taurus so this is about inner chemistry as well as outer chemistry gemini and taurus Taurus will not want it. They'll look at it and they go, yuck, yuck. Something will be like, ooh, scary. I'm not going there. But then something else will be like, and Gemini will be like, come on, come on. And Taurus will be like, oh, okay. And then there is a Taurus that really wants a Gemini. They usually want their other parts. Like say, if you know, you've got a Gemini sun looking at you, but then they've got Cancer Moon. You might actually be after the Cancer Moon. You might actually not be after the person, you might be after a different aspect of them. But unfortunately, you have to be with them if you chose them. Because usually Gemini comes into a Taurian life to form relationships, to really get things done, to really form something. And then uh, you will need to start looking at that part of you that doesn't want it. You know, what is it that doesn't want it? Oh, gosh, I don't want this, I don't want that. If there is something that is really picky with the new with the Gemini, you'll need to stop that and you'll need to just commit because Gemini comes into a Taurus, Taurus, Taurus's life to get it, just to get it together, 
let's set it up let's do it let's do it so basically have feeling have feeling for this person even though you might be really annoyed by their mannerisms you might be really pissed off about how they leave the shoes on the floor you know how, how they smell even sometimes you know you might be like oh but there will need to be a really strong commitment to yourself through this person and like they're recreating you and they're doing so much for you so be grateful be grateful because they're a huge catalyst for your ascension Okay, so with Cancer, Taurus finds shame. Taurus finds shame that brings better things. Like sometimes you might see a Cancer, you might be like, oh, but I'm humble, I'm vulnerable. Like you might actually feel, oh, but I'm only just me and you're here in my life and you're so much better sometimes and you're so beautiful and I love you. I don't know what I've done without you. Like they might be like, oh, lo love, I think I'm in love. And sometimes at a first sight, they might be like a, Oh yeah, but then a second side they might be like, oh yeah, and the third side will be like, oh yeah, like so it's like dating together over a long period of time. The more you have time apart, the bigger your value together. So if you're dating, say you've been six months dating on and off together, like seeing each other once or twice a month, and every time you see each other, you're like, oh, I fall deep in love with you. But then you have some time apart, you're like, huh, what, 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 what? Sorry, what? No, 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 no. I'm doing things my way. But then as soon as you come together again, you expand. Cancer brings Taurus good stuff, good stuff, like breakthroughs, ambitions, uh, separation with past. Cancer and Taurus is like going at it, like we are gonna do it. But the moment that they're actually gonna do it, it fucks out. So basically when you're like, we're going to get married. We're going to sleep in the same bed. We're going to be in the same house every day. We both work from home. No, no way. No way. We'll get together and be like, all right, I've got a sister. I've got a brother. I've got a husband elsewhere. I've got a polarity. Like oh, I'm freaking over there. And you, you can be anywhere you want. Okay. Oh, we got different lives, but you come together. You're like, I love you so much. And then you're like, okay, I love you. And then you've got to like break free of that sometimes. But then sometimes the minute you break free, sometimes you might choose somebody else. You will not want it what you've got because if, sometimes during these relationships, the Taurus or the Cancer, they'll stray with other people. But then they'll find that whatever they're straying with is not as good as what they've got with like together. Taurus and Cancer and Taurus and Virgo too. There will not be anything as satisfying, quite as satisfying if, if you formed a good connection. Like you might want to go out and explore different things or whatever, but you'll be thinking of each other. You might not see each other for months, but you'll be thinking about each other. And that's something really special. So take your time and have space, basically. <laughs> the more space you have, the less you're deluded in this experience because it's really watery. Leo, Leo and Taurus. It's really heavy. <laughs> it's really heavy. Sorry. Okay, so Leo and Taurus makes good sense. Things are on the table. Things are in the wallet. Things are in the bank. Things are in the cupboard. Things are in the marriage. Things are in the children. Things are happening. And things are getting built. Things are being put together very well. But no one is here. We're building. We're building. Where are you, honey? I don't know. I'm building with you. We're building this great thing. I don't know who I am. I don't know. I don't know where I am. It's sounds like automatic. It's like you get two puppets. Sorry. You're building this beautiful future you can build as much as you want together but know that there will need to be some time where you cry or some time when you laugh sometime when you feel something because sometimes Taurus and Leo can put you under like a, a block it's not a bad block it's necessary for the formation of worlds like manifestation amazing amazing but there needs to be a time when you sort of go and you break out of that and you go oh I need to get drunk with my friends. I need to get pissed. You know, I, I have to go run around naked in the fields. And sometimes the longer you stay in that relationship and build constrictly, consecutively for a long time, the crazier the breakouts. Like say you haven't had any breaks from building 
and then you might just be like okay i've been with this person for 20 years i'm gonna go uh to the amazon i'm gonna get really fucked up on drugs i'm going to then run around crazy doing weird stuff and sometimes it works too sometimes you might have a really f like phase weird phase for like two or three years of like craziness after a lengthy relationship that usually balances it out completely and then you come back to yourself and you've got everything even if you've been together for two months you likely build something you likely get more income you get more work done you get more opportunities you get more things and more optimism even more like relatability or relationship stuff more relating relating with people leo helps you like no one else with that but at the end you'll need to definitely have breaks have breaks have complete like utter spasm sometimes like i've been with this person for three weeks i gotta go camping i gotta go out on the road i gotta go start doing something completely different then you come back and it's fine i just gotta go, go blow my dose just a second Who's next? Okay, we've got Virgo. Virgo and Taurus. Okay, this is like the best combo. This is probably the best, best, best life decision that you've ever made. If you ever wanted a child. If you've ever wanted a child, do it with a Virgo. If you ever wanted a child in yourself to be nourished, do it with a Virgo. If you've ever wanted commitment, or if you ever wanted to see yourself better, do it with them because Virgo is like a godsend. It's like if you've ever been a barren earth or if you've ever been a very timed or very strong or stingy, stingy in any way, you will blossom. Virgo will just make you freaking brand new. Virgo will give you the wings that you never had. Virgo will give you everything. But what are you giving Virgo? Well, Taurus is not giving. Taurus is just providing a base. And then Virgo can do whatever they freaking wish. So a perfect scenario, a good scenario, if you've ever had a lot of income as a man and you're thinking, I want a wife in a really traditional way, like almost like a bought woman, give it a chance for the Virgo. Like be like, okay, I've got this house and I've got this money and I'm going to put it on the table every time you get a paycheck or you got an inheritance. You're like, we'll never have to worry about money. And then you just freaking do nothing. Like you just sit there with your feet up all day or you go fishing, you go hiking, go do anything you want. Virgo, especially uh, if you are like an older person and Virgo is a younger person, they'll do freaking everything for you. They'll clean, they'll cook, they'll do everything. They'll be happy, they'll be like growing, they'll be glowing, but be aware that you have to put in as well. Uh, but that, yeah, that can definitely work. Okay, so Libra and Taurus have the same ruler. Venus, I'm Libra. Hi Taurus, do you find me attractive? Now, hello. Well, let's have a look at what's going on between us, uh, Libra and Taurus. I've been with the Taurus before. Taurus rising has been an interesting experience. I've had a very close friend with the Taurus rising. Let's have a look what it means. Okay, so the energy of Taurus doesn't really want Libra. Because it doesn't really perceive it as possible. There's something about um, Virgo, though, that's really appealing. Like, say, I've got Venus and Mars conjunct and Virgo. You might be reading me as Virgo. But there is a certainty with Libra. And a very stoic energy that um, Taurus, uh, Taurus like wants it to be something else. Like Taurus pulls it towards Virgo. Virgo, especially if you say living with a Libra and they got a moon, Mars, you know, cusp or something, or cluster thing. And Virgo, you know, say you see something Virgin about a Libra, you may likely want them to be that instead of what they are. But Libra, especially Libra Sun, is Libra Sun. There will be a very strong need for them. Like Taurus might really need that Libra energy. I need you. I need you. I don't know freaking why. I just love you. I just have to have you. There's something about Libra that makes Taurus really passionate about something and very dispassionate about all things. You know, clutter, clusters. You know, Virgo. <laughs> Virgo is what... Um, Libra reminds Taurus of, but Taurus can't really see the full story. Like, Taurus will just want Libra to become that. Something from the past. And that's not something that Libra really wants to do here. Because even though Libra is easily swayed into different forms and roles for people, it'll be like, hang on, you're a fuckwit. 
I don't care for you. I don't trust you. There'll be something in Libra that will push um, people away when they're not uh, accepting them for who they are. So if you've got a partner who's Libra, you have to trust that they are who they are. There needs to be no pushing and smudging them into a different person. But I want you to be a little bit prettier. Why? Yeah, you're great, but you need to take some different uh, experiences. I don't actually trust that you really like your job. I don't really trust that you're really this person. You have to stop, Taurus, if you are doing that. So basically, when you're in a weird Taurus and you're with a Libra, you can go very far. If you're in a weird Taurus, so you just trust that you don't freaking know who they are. And you don't want to freaking change them. You're just there. You're just there. You're just enjoying the moment, the time you have together. That is fine. If you're like head strong about you and you're like complete, you can do freaking anything with a Libra and then won't get possessive or freaked out or anything. You can do anything. You can even do really freaky things. Like you can come home with another person and Libra will be like, that's okay. I can understand that. There's something within Libra that really gets Taurus, even if Libra is not satisfied, but Libra will find a way to understand Taurus better than anyone else will. So Scorpio, if Scorpio is your seventh house, Taurus, let's have a look at that. <laughs> this is not wine, this is tea. <laughs> Though I got wine, that's a good idea. Okay, so with Scorpio, you are wild. Scorpio pulls Taurus into a game. With Taurus, Scorpio doesn't quite understand things, maybe sometimes, but gets things done. Like, almost like autopilot, like voodoo. But Taurus doesn't kind of get what Scorpio is about, ever. Like, Taurus is like, well, that's it. you just this. This is who you are. And Scorpio will just one day go, that's the opposite of who I am. And then Scorpio will provide a totally different picture of themselves to a Taurus. And Taurus will be like, what the fuck? I hate you. I hate you. Why are you not the same as I thought you were? But you're so sexy. Like there's like a little game because uh, Scorpio keeps on transforming with Taurus to the point where they are unrecognizable. If you are a Scorpio watching this for your partner Taurus, you will likely transform more than with anyone with the Taurus and cause great hullabaloo in the society and the people around you. Scorpio will be like, whoa, uplifted or like strangely regarded because Taurus really puts a spell on Scorpio, they don't even perceive themselves. Scorpio, they will not want it. There will come a time of change where even Taurus, the partner Taurus is transcendable. So through the different shifts of Taurus as well, Scorpio will sort of start no longer like picking and coding in and changing them. They'll sort of go, you're unchangeable, aren't you? And Taurus will be like, well, yeah, of course, nothing good will ever change. And then Taurus will be like, that's great, I am good. And Scorpio will be like, yeah, you are good. And then that's pretty much the end of things. But there will need to be a very nice stoic romance, okay, to back things up. If you are with a Scorpio, there has to be a weird way that you met Taurus. If you are with them, there has to be an enlightening process through the whole relationship, even building up to the actual time of your meeting. There has to be magic and weird synergy. Like there has to be freaky, freaky things going on. If you don't feel freaky with a Scorpio, there's likely chance that they're looking to someone else or they're just not ready. Or they're just not even there. So basically, well, they could be there, but it could take time. Sometimes you can meet a Scorpio and you kind of know on some level they're yours. But every time you meet them, like something falls flat. They're looking elsewhere. They're looking at the phone. They're not with it means it's not time because sometimes you can actually know that you're meant to be together even when the other person doesn't really see it and that can be a very good thing for you to sort of keep them in mind but put them like way behind the cupboards like you don't even look at that person because the minute you start obsessing with somebody who's not really yours Taurus you lose yourself you lost it okay you lost it you're thinking about them too much you're not actually looking at your reality you're not looking at your fingernails you're not looking at your style of clothes you're not looking at anything you've got on the physical that's a loss that's a loss just um if there is an obsession with a scorpio ah la 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 la, la. okay okay yeah i'm thinking about him again it's okay and then just like do something completely different you know you meet your girlfriends for lunch or anything like that but 